Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now today we're going to be looking at a new build of Android 10 TV on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this comes to us from constakang.com and I'll be leaving links in the description below. Now this is a fantastic image and it comes to us with G apps. This means we have full access to the Google Android TV store and I've tested it with some games and it works absolutely great. You can flash it to an SD card using Berliner Etcher. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now if you are interested in a full tutorial of how to do this, let me know in the comments below. In this video, I want to give you a look at the Android build running on this Raspberry Pi 4. And I can confirm this is actually the best version of Android running on the Raspberry Pi 4 I've ever tested. And this is mainly down to the fact that this build supports GPU acceleration and OpenGL ES 3.1, which is something that hasn't been available for any other Android TV builds for the Raspberry Pi 4. So if we pop into ADA64 and head on into the display settings, you can see it's using V3D version 4.2, and it also supports OpenGL ES 3.1, and the default resolution is set to 1080p. Now moving up to the CPU, I've overclocked it to over 2GHz on all four cores, and 750MHz on the GPU. And as you can see, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4, the 4GB model. And it's showing me I've got 4GB of RAM installed, and total memory of just under 4GB, and available memory of just under 3GB. Now, you could, if you wish, use this build as a daily driver, because as far as I can see, most things that you need are working, including audio over HDMI, Bluetooth, touchscreen support, and Wi-Fi. Now, of course, Google Play is installed, and everything I installed worked very well, including some pretty large and intensive games like Asheville 8. Now as you can see the installation process was just like any other Android device. I'll just show you a few clips of Ashville 8 and one of the other games I installed. As you can see, for a Raspberry Pi 4, the graphics and sound are amazing. Now bear in mind, I do have my Raspberry Pi overclocked, and I have it in a cooling case. Now of course, as we've got Google Play, I've got YouTube installed, and I can confirm playback is smooth, no stuttering or tearing, and amazingly, all at 1080p. This phone, if you care about video and photo, if you care about... As you can see, we're running at 1080p with no issues. If you want something like a DSLR or mirrorless experience inside of a smartphone, there's probably nothing closer than that. Now, the main reason we're achieving all this is because of the hardware acceleration, which up until now hasn't really been available on the Raspberry Pi 4 with Android TV. So I was able to run 3D Mark and finish the test. And if I go to the top here, you can see my results. So the OpenGL Mark came out at 168. Quite low, but it seemed to be doing the job. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is Android 10 running on a Raspberry Pi 4. And for all intents and purposes, it's running just as well as my NVIDIA Shield, apart from the obvious differences like processor and graphics. But I would be more than happy to use this as a daily driver if I didn't have the NVIDIA Shield TV. So obviously I'm happy with the performance. It is, like I mentioned before, the best performance I've ever got from a Raspberry Pi. Now I'm leaving the links for where you can download the image in the description below. And you just basically flash it to an SD card using something like Berliner Etcher. Now if any of you want me to do a full installation video, let me know in the comments below. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like, and maybe even a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.